everyone, Forex here with another video tutorial for AMA3. It's been a while and I'm gonna tell you a bit about that at the end of the video. Now let's go to the tutorial itself. We'll be talking about time and the most simple ways to check for time or change it. I want to tell you about a couple of pretty useful commands that are related to time management in the game. I'll show you a few examples and situations where you can use these commands and of course, as always, we'll be working in single player environment. For multiplayer use you will have to be a bit more careful with the commands and I recommend you to read something more about them on the wiki. Now let's take the first command that I've prepared for you. We'll start changing time right away with the command set date. It is the go-to command for changing the time to any other possible value and it's also pretty simple to use as well. The best situation to use this command is whenever you want to jump to a specific time that you know ahead. So let's say I have this mission with many cutscenes and the first cutscene will be played in March and the following one will be played in June two years later. So I'll set up the first date in the Intel March 2035 morning time and with this I can make any sort of a cutscene I want and when the time is right I will advance to the second time moment. Set date looks like this and needs five values in an array. The individual values represent year, month, day, hour and minute and allows you to precisely set up pretty much any time you desire. In my example we'll want to use the following numbers. 2037 for the year, 6 as June, 15 for the day, 3 pm. Now let's briefly look at the very similar command date, which returns the current date in the same array format. And if you follow the channel and have seen some recent videos, you have probably seen me working with commands that return values, like set pause and get pause, or set damage and damage. And I will once again demonstrate the usefulness of these commands by moving 5 days and 12 hours into the future, no matter what the initial time is. And that means that I no longer need to care about whether I start at May 2035, December 1992 or any other time, I will just add 5 days and 12 hours to the initial date. All I need for that is the command date. The command will look like this. Set date brackets, date select 0, date select 1, date select 2 plus 5, date select 3 plus 12 and date select 4. Be aware of the parentheses, they are quite important in this case, so copy the command from the screen or just from the paste bin link down below the video. What we are doing here is basically just taking values from the array that the command date provides to us. The first value will be our year value, the second one our month, we will then add 5 to that third value and the new number will be our day value and so on. So without needing anything else, we have set up a dynamic time shift with still just one command. Now let's test this in our case, I'll open the map to see the dates more easily and you can see that uh, it's working quite nicely so far. Now let's do another experiment. This time we'll change the initial day to 29th. Now we are adding a number 5 to our day value. So that will be 29 plus 5, 34. But no month has 34 days of course. And the command itself knows that and it automatically changes the month and then the days accordingly. So I just wanted to show you that you don't really need to worry too much when using this command. Uh, because it will do its best to tolerate values that some other commands might not like. And if you will tell the game to go to the 54th of July, it will calculate the actual valid day in August and move the time to that. So that's pretty fun, but we don't always need to do things that fancy. Oftentimes all that is needed for a mission is to move the time by a few hours forwards or backwards. And we have another command for that, skip time is a really simple command that only does one thing, skips a given amount of time. The time itself is just a number representing hours that we want to skip. This number can be positive to jump forwards in time or negative to go back. Of course, you won't literally go back in time, the only thing that will change here is the weather, but even that is oftentimes very useful in a mission. 
Of course, if you wish to skip for less than an hour, you are going to have to use a decimal number, and if you wish to skip a few days, you are going to have to multiply each day by 24. Of course, the command setDate is capable of doing pretty much exactly the same effect as I demonstrated before, so if you just need to move the time by a few hours, you can even choose which command you like more. There's one more command that I'd like to present to you here, another one that is quite commonly used in the missions, set ACC time. This command can accelerate or slow down the in-game time and it is in some ways already implemented in the game itself. In single player you can press a button to go twice as fast or even four times faster than normal. The splendid camera has the ability to slow down time and allow you to capture the perfect moment and thanks to this command you can change the time speed yourself as well. The command itself is again extremely simple, it only needs a number which is the speed multiplier, 1 is normal speed, 0.5 is twice as slow and 2 is twice as fast. This command bears a couple of warnings though and I want to mention them to avoid some confusion later when you go and try the commands in your missions. The command set ACC time doesn't allow just any value, due to various reasons the developers actually restricted the permitted values, so you can use any number between 0.0078125 to 4. Any number higher or lower will be converted to these values automatically. What that means is that you can't stop the time entirely, that is not possible, you cannot run the game faster than 4 times the speed, and you can't input negative values to try and go literally back in time, the game doesn't allow that. Also bear in mind that players can change the time flow on their keyboard very simply, and if you don't lock them in a cutscene or AI control unit where they can't use the keyboard, they can pretty easily change the time multiplier set by your commands. So bear that in mind when you make your missions. The time and date are actually quite important aspects of a mission and you should definitely take them into account while creating your projects. In the winter the days are shorter and very slightly darker, the game takes moon cycles into account, the same as star and constellation positions as well as the sun's position which can change the mission's lightning quite a lot, in some cases even breaking the mood you want to create in the mission. So I really recommend you to think carefully about the time interval that your mission is going to be placed in. There's of course much more stuff that you can do with these time related commands, I can link you to one of my earlier videos where I use dynamic text functions to display the current date and time using exactly these commands and you can think of many different examples yourselves. I'll show you one more example here that I've prepared, um, I have this little control center over here with a few computers and I have set up a soldier to come in every day at 8am turn on the computers and then leave at 8 pm. I didn't have the time or will to make actual animations and everything, you can do that yourselves, I just teleport a soldier to the chair and then teleport him away. It's all controlled by one trigger, I wanted to do this as simple as possible, so you can of course use a script instead if you want to. This trigger is set to repeat it, in the condition box it asks for the time, Date select 3 returns the hours and I am asking if the hours value is more than 8 and less than 20 and in that case the soldier gets glued to the chair and if the time is different the soldier is detached and returned back to his original position which is marked over here by the game logic unit. So this is a very simple example of what you can do with the time in the mission, as always there's a lot more you could do with this so go ahead and try the commands yourselves. So this is all for this tutorial, I will now just briefly mention for the dedicated followers of the channel that I am indeed back and making videos again after a brief pause that I had. It was not really a vacation, I was quite ill most of the time and I was away, uh, but it is no longer important, I'm fine now. So if you have some good ideas for the future tutorials, feel free to post your ideas in the comment section down below the video. And also, if you haven't already, check out my recently released mission Maze, it's a fun little mission that is about you going through a randomly generated maze puzzle. I'm still working on improvements for the mission and it will get some more features in the future as well. That's all I wanted to say, so that's it for this video, I hope to see you in the next one, comment, like and share, and have a great day!